Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, this is Francis, and welcome to today's telecast. Um, we are just starting a new series called uh, Our Identity in the Messiah, Our Identity in Christ. Praise God. Now, I've had different kinds of uh, um, experiences as I travel from one place to the other. Uh, the question I want to seem to ask is how come we are not able to get the best of uh, what the Father has prepared for us as people of God? How come um, the children of Satan seem to uh, triumph or seems to um, um, reap benefits of whatever it is that Satan is offering them and that we that are children of God, we are having issues with our Christianity or our, our life in the, in Christ. Praise God. Now, I'd like us to start off this uh, uh, message by uh, looking into uh, the book of uh, uh, Ephesians. Okay? Now, Ephesians chapter 1. Hallelujah. Now, I'll read. It says... Shaul, an apostle of Yeshua the Messiah, by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus. That's one. And then, and faithful in the Messiah, Yeshua. So, the message is written to the the saints in Ephesus and every other person who is a saint or a believer, okay, in the Lord Yeshua. It now says grace to you and the peace from the Father and the Father of our Lord Yeshua the Messiah. So here is identifying and letting us know that the Father, okay, or God is our Father, okay, and Yeshua is also a son. So it means that you and I are actually on the same pedestal with Yeshua, the Son of God. This is, this is so bogus uh, this is so um I, I think the word to use is bogus so this is so elaborate this is so rich so wealthy so awesome it's almost impossible to it, it's, a, it's almost so hard to try and imagine how this is real that we are sharing the same Father with our Lord and Savior, Yeshua. Oh my. Now, look at verse 3. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord, Yeshua the Messiah, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. So there are abundance of mercy, abundance of wealth, abundance of blessing. When you, when, when you hear the word abundance, you know, it means that it's surplus. It, it means that it, it's not, there's no famine. It's not shortchanged. We're not shortchanged. It means that we are fully loaded with blessings. You know, Yeshua said this. He said that the thief comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. He said, but I have come that you might have life and to have it more abundantly. Did you see that? So, there's, there should not be any excuse. The life is in abundance. 
the life is unending. The life is everlasting. The blessing is everlasting. Oh my God. Hallelujah. If we have such abundance of life, if we have been engrafted into the family of God, if that which belongs to Yeshua belongs also to us, if we are co-heirs, how come we are not tapping into the resources that has been made available to us? That's the question. Let's look at Romans. Romans in chapter 8. Um, <clears throat> Hallelujah. Let's start from verse 14. Verse 14 says that as many as are led by the Spirit of God. So it means that the, the floodgates are open. There is no restriction. Access is not denied. I hope you hear what I'm saying. Access is not denied. So it means that it's a free for all. Okay, I remember when uh, the president opened up the, the gates of America, it was seen that everyone could just come in, you know, and people from all around the world start trooping into the U.S. I mean, no restrictions whatsoever. As, as much as you can come in. Hallelujah. Praise God. So here is saying that as many as are led, so which means that the problem is not with the Father. The problem is not with the, the Son. Neither is the problem with the Spirit. The problem is in our hands. Are we willing to be led by the Spirit of God? That's where the question is. Because once you are willing to be led by the Spirit of God, then you don't have any problem. Okay, Do you get what I'm saying? You don't have any problem. The leading of the Spirit of God, what benefit is it to you? Because if I can be granted the ability to, to paint the picture well so that you can understand, then you might be able to, might just be able to uh, have the boldness, the assurance, Okay, to begin to tap into the resources that I've made available to you and to me. Hallelujah. Verse 15 says that you did not receive the spirit of bondage. You're not enslaved at all. You're not a slave. You're a child of God. You're a child of God. You're not a slave. You're not under, under, under any bondage. There's no restriction whatsoever. It's all yours. You see, you're not uh, in bondage again to fear. You haven't received. The spirit that you receive is not the spirit of bondage. So the spirit is a free spirit. It's not the spirit that puts you into any form of bondage. So it is your choice. Your choice is yours. Hallelujah. The choice is yours. Praise God. So if you did not receive the spirit of bondage to fear, but you have been given or you have received the spirit of adoption. And by this spirit, you and I have the ability, capacity, strength, to cry, Abba, Father, come on, Dad. I'm here. I'm your child. Hallelujah. I see that's not enough. Verse 16 continues and says that the Spirit himself, even the Spirit himself, bears witness 
with your spirit, with my spirit, with our spirit, and reconfirms and reassures us that we are children of God. And if we've come to the agreement and conclusion that we're children of God, it's telling us that if we are children, then we are qualified to be heirs of God. And if we are heirs of God, it means that we are joint heirs with Christ, with the Messiah. Hallelujah. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. We are sharing the resources of the Father. We are sharing it. We are sharing it all. Yeshua is not hiding anything from you. The Father is not hiding anything from you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because it's not something we have seen. There's no reference point. Because we have not actually engaged or traveled or traversed in the realm of the spirit. We are so used to the canal, you know, um, environment, the canal world. Um, even if we look at the canal aspect, you know, imagine your dad, okay? Your dad um, is very wealthy, has uh, tons and tons of uh, um, money, you know, gold reserves and all that stuff, okay? Um, and then he bequeaths it to you. Do you understand? At least we have seen that, you know, in our lives. We have seen it um, transpire. We've seen uh, wealthy people hand over their wealth to their children. We have also seen their uh, wealthy parents, how they treat their children, you know, even while they're alive. Not, not to talk about when they finally move on to uh, the next level and, and bequeath their resources to their children. So it's important for us to, to look into what it is and how it is to inherit, okay, spiritually. You know, like um, Ephesians tells us that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. So the realm is, or the dimension is the dimension of the heavenly places. Okay, so we are not seeing it, but what we don't understand is the geographical location of that heavenly places. Okay, um, the geographical location. Um, it says it, that the blessing is in Christ. So where is that in Christ? Now, Colossians tells us that Christ in you. So, it means that the blessing is in you. Uh, because you still have this mortal flesh, and because you have not journeyed inward, uh, because you've not traversed into the inner recesses of your being, as a believer, not I'm not talking about as a as a um, as a, um, a secular person now, okay, or as a normal person, I'm talking about as a believer, as a fervent, um, serious-minded, uh, adventurous uh, child of God who is willing to engage the seven spirits of God to be able to see and know what is available for him in his inheritance okay now look at galatians before we go to ephesians we'll look at galatians okay it says now i say that the heir as long as he's a child uh, this is galatians chapter 4 verse 1 it says there's no difference between him and a slave okay even though he is the master of all. Now he's the master in waiting. Okay. 
Now, he cannot assume position of leadership because the wealth, the authority, the power, okay, that is reserved and waiting for him is so awesome, uh, it's unthinkable. The Bible tells us that the riches of Christ is unthinkable. You cannot phantom it, okay? So because of that, you can't just carry a child and put that child in a place of authority. It's like taking your 10-year-old uh, son and giving him a Lamborghini <laughs> or giving him uh, a Mercedes. You know? Yes, it's his son. Yes, it is his right. But he's not matured enough to manage and control and subject the that the 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 power the um, radiance and the uh, the uh, influence okay that's, I'm, I'm looking for the right word now okay that um, that toy would have over his person all right he will be too excited. Uh, he wants to show off to his friends and things like that. And he doesn't have the capacity to control. Okay? To overcome all the thoughts and all the things that will enter into his head. You know, to try out. Hallelujah. Now verse 2, that's in Galatians chapter 4, tells us that, But this child has to come under guidance and stewards until the time appointed by the father. Did you see? So the father is the one who is watching his son and observing the progress of the son and determining whether this child, because the father is the one who knows how much labor, you know, that was put in and he knows also how he is managing, <clears throat> okay, how he's managing um, or how he came about the wealth and resources that is in question. So because of that, he also knows the, the peculiarity of how to uh, govern and oversee the affairs of the estate, okay. So he's the one who has to determine. Hallelujah. Now verse 3 that tells us that even so, we, when we were children, now look at this now. He's using first the natural, okay, uh, scenario. Now he's gradually inching into the spiritual dimension. He says that even so, when we were children, we were under bondage, or we were in bondage under the elements. So there are restrictions. Okay? There are restrictions. It says, But when the fullness of the time has come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that they might receive the adoption as sons. Now, verse 6 says that, and because you were sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son, okay, into your hearts. Did you see that? The spirit is not without, it's in your heart. The activity, the growth process is in your heart. We earlier said that Christ in you is the hope of glory, the book of Colossians tells us. So here he's saying, because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, we are no longer slaves, but a son. And if you are a son, then you are an heir of God, true Christ. So the process has to go through 
the person of the Messiah. Did you see that? Hallelujah. Now, let's look at Ephesians chapter, uh, Ephesians chapter 1. Now, if you've been listening to me, you agree that this is uh, the area I always spend my time, you know, trying to um, help both myself and the saints to understand how we can receive our inheritance. It says, therefore, I, after I have heard of your faith in the Lord Yeshua and your love for all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in all my prayers. What's the prayer is all about? What was the prayer all about? It says that the God and Father, or the God of our Lord Yeshua the Messiah, the Father of glory, okay, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Now, I'm sure you've been following the teachings, okay? Now, we, you, you would agree that we have been uh, talking about conforming to the image of the pattern son. Um, we have been talking about not being not allowing yourself to be conformed by this world, but rather you should uh, give yourself to transformation of the word by renewing your mind. So, you see, renew your mind is an internal thing. Renewing your mind is an internal thing. Renewing your mind is an internal thing. Um, I always use a chicken or a chick as an example in my teachings. You know, the hair or the feathers. I call it hair because at first it's not, not really feathers. I've not matured to feathers, but it comes as hair because it has to come out of the skin of the chick. After a while, it begins to mature. The feathers begin to take formation, feather formation, and it forms into feathers. But the point I'm trying to make is that the source from where it's coming is not without. The source from where it's coming is within. The DNA of the chicken or the chick Okay, it's a law written inside the chick. Okay, I mean, it started from being an egg to maturing into um, um, a chick and the, uh, inside the shell and then from there breaking out of the shell into this world and then the process of the growth outside the shell begins. That's where you see that the, the, the glory of the chick or the chicken is coming from inside because it's the, it's the, the feathers is a covering. The feather is a covering, a protective covering from the elements, from the rain, from the sun, from the wind, and things like that, okay? And it also helps to keep heat, all right? So when, when there's cold, hallelujah. So these are all the benefits of the glory or the feathers of the chicken. And it also translates into colors, okay? So if you are to study and use that, and now coming over to the uh, glory, of the father you see that first of all what god did was to put his seed of christ inside us where we receive uh and believe the the in the name of the son okay we receive him um by believing in the name of the son that would tell you what happened in in eden in the book of genesis that that serpent preached a gospel to Eve okay and then from there to Adam 
and they saw. Okay? You see that? They saw that the fruit was good for food. And it was such that would make one wise. I hope you hear what I'm saying now. Now, if you if you if you look at it, they saw. You see that what John said in, in the epistles. He said that which we heard. Okay, and we we saw we saw we handled the word of eternal life. Okay. So it means that they believed in it, they handled it, and they, that brought them into a fellowship. You see, that's the process which we must understand, the process. That's why it's very important not to allow yourself to be conformed to this world. Do you understand that? But rather be transformed by the renewal of your mind so that you can get away, walk away from the clutches of this present age. We have to understand that is spirits that actually churn out these things. So that's why God sent his spirit. Because it is his spirit that has the capacity and ability to enter into you and begin to reform or start the process or activate the process of um, the, uh, the process of uh, um, our redemption. Okay? Hallelujah. So it says... Um, in verse 17 that the God of our Lord Yeshua the Messiah, the Father of glory may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him now verse 18, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened in Eden their eyes were opened when they ate or when they believed in what the Satan, what the serpent preached to them. Okay, so their eyes were open and they were able to see that they had lost glory. They were naked of glory. But here, Paul is giving us the scientific process of engaging, okay, and bringing back the glory. Did you see that? So here he says, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Your eyes can only be enlightened when you engage the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge. Okay? It says that, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you might be able to know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. So the inheritance is in you. Did you hear that? Did you see that? The inheritance is in you. Whatsoever it is that you are looking for as a believer, it's not... Oh. Whoever taught us the gospel of going to heaven did great havoc. Okay? Because... You say you want to go to heaven so that you can walk on the streets of gold. Hallelujah. But there is knowledge to be acquired. And the knowledge to be acquired is in a place, in a realm, in a terrain, in this world. You need to grow in this world. This is a place of growth. This is a place of learning. This is a place where you learn. This is a place where you are you are given opportunity to do your internship. Okay? You are able to learn. You are able to tackle spirits. For we rest not against flesh and blood, but against spirits. Wicked spirits. Governing spirits. I hope you hear. And we, we stand against the wires, the deception of the enemy. Did you see that? Now, all those things happen here. So, you have to, from here, tackle those spirits and pull them down, dispossess them of their influences over mankind. Remember? Bondage of the elements. 
Hallelujah. So here, the inheritance is in the saints. And now verse 19 now says, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? See the word believe. Those who believe in his name, to them gave it the power to become sons of God. Hallelujah. It says, according to his working power, or his work, according to the mighty working of his mighty power, which he walked in Christ, the Messiah, when he raised him from the dead and got him to sit at his right hand in heavenly places. Whoa. Which he wrought in Christ. When he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. You are blessed, okay, with all spiritual blessings. Okay, in the heavenly places, in Christ. I hope you hear what I'm saying. Now, um, I know it's getting a bit tricky, so I'm hoping and praying that we're going to be able to um, clarify this aspect. Now, look at verse 21. It says, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. Okay? And he has put everything under his feet and gave him to be the head of all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Hallelujah. So you see that when I begin to say that we have been blessed, it's not even a joke. Hallelujah. It's not even a joke. And um, um, we, we have to really come to that place of realization. And we can only understand that by allowing ourselves to be led by the Spirit of God. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. We are sharing the resources of the Father. We're sharing it. We're sharing it all. Yeshua is not hiding anything from you. The Father is not hiding anything from you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, the only thing is this, that these resources cannot rest when there's too much fat. The fat needs to be burnt up. The flesh needs to be destroyed. And what would assist in doing this is if we suffer with him. Suffering means restrictions. We bring ourselves to subjection. We 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 uh, deprive of our, uh, deprive ourselves of specific benefits that the world is making available to us to deprive us from our resources. Hallelujah. Let, let me. Uh, we're going to come back here, but let me let's continue. That's in Romans chapter chapter eight. This time around, not chapter eight now, chapter twelve. You see, the Father knows what we are up against. Even Shaul knows also what we are up against. Babylon. Here, in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, it tells us that I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you and I should present our bodies as a living sacrifice. You see that? Holy, 
acceptable to the Father. And he says that this is your reasonable service. Hallelujah. Blessed be God. He says that we should please endeavor, try to present your body as a sacrifice. So which means that your body is a living sacrifice. You are alive, you are not going to die, but you are going to go through the process of the sacrifice. You are going to be sacrificed and still be alive. A life has to be taken from you so that you will be dead to that life and also give room to this other life. Did you hear? Like a chicken now. The life in this world, once you slice the truth, the blood flows out. That chicken is dead. Can no longer react. It's completely dead. So you can do whatever you want to do with it. You can cook it, you can roast it, you can fry it, you can bake it, you can grill, or you can even eat it raw if you, if, you, if you are that kind of a person. Hallelujah. The, ch the chicken is not going to be bothered anymore. Why? Because that life is gone. What God is asking is that you and I should sacrifice this life so that we can have access to the resources of the other life. Does that make sense? Verse 2 tells us that we should not be conformed to this world. We should not allow this world to dictate to us, to conform us and mold us into another kind of being that we are used to, that we are very comfortable with, that we have lived, we have tested, tried, and we've enjoyed, we've benefited from it. He said, now, drop that life. That's what he's saying. Now it says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. So there's a transformation that is available to you when you begin to renew your mind. Hallelujah. You're going to permit me, okay? You're going to really permit me. Don't be offended. A lot of believers think and feel that just prayers alone is a mark of who is spiritual. Yes, as a priest, as a child of God, as a believer, you must pray to your father. You, there must be communion between you and your father. All right? Hallelujah. There must be. Should be. Shouldn't be a stranger to your dad. Okay? But if you can just bear with me and look into what we call prayer today. It's far from communion with the Father, I'm sorry to say. Okay? And please, I'm not speaking in any derogatory manner. I'm just trying to call us to reality that just praying alone, and most of the times we don't pray the kind of prayer the Father expects us to pray. Our prayer points are always selfish, always has to do with what we want and what we're going to get the idols of our hearts. Okay? But if we pray according to the will of the Father, the Bible says that He hears us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
renewing your mind helps you to reason in a particular way. Once your mind has been renewed, once your mind has been refurbished, re reactivated into another kind of life, once your reasoning, your ideology, your, your reason, reasoning faculty has been adjusted or tweaked, okay, uh, once you begin to think according to, like, uh, the cultures of this world has derailed us and caused us to reason in a particular way. Hallelujah. And the purpose of that is to build a formidable fortress that would prevent and deprive us of benefiting from the resources of the Father. Can you see that? That's why the Bible is pleading to us. Shaul is pleading. The Lord is pleading. I'm also pleading to both yourself and myself, to us, that we should present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, to God, which is our reasonable service. Okay? Uh, it says something that um, you might be able to prove what is good, one, what is acceptable, two, and that perfect will of the Father. Hallelujah. Praise God. Do you see that? So, if you and I can be intentional, if we can be intentional and we are able to uh, push, you know, with the kind of painting and picture that this particular verse or chapter is trying to get us to see. If we can be able to, you know, take just let's let's do a trial. Let's do a trial. Let's see. Is this workable? Let's just try. Let's try and refuse to be taught, conformed, instructed by this world. Uh, the Bible is so connected, both the old and new, okay? Now, uh, I see that we as believers, we choose things that we are comfortable with in Scripture. For example, we like the Psalms, okay? But the Psalms is in the Old Testament. Praise God. Now, Leviticus is also in the Old Testament. We like Genesis. All right? You know, we like um, the book of Joshua, of course, because there's success there. But it's in the Old Testament. So this, this selective um, tendencies that we have in the body, where we just pick the things that we feel okay with, and the others we... we you know, read the book of of um, Proverbs. Even Ecclesiastes, we read Ecclesiastes. We read Isaiah. Arise and shine, for your light is come. But the, what we fail to realize is that both Isaiah, Jeremiah, Zephaniah, uh, Zechariah, all these Nahum, Amos, they are all prophetic writings and in the New Testament that we are so comfortable with was called out from, was drawn out of the wells of the father prophets. Did you see that? And give it to us to drink. And we drink without our Hebraic roots. Hallelujah. Now, we all know that the man who started the Jewish and the, the Jewish, the Hebrew uh, lineage and genealogy, okay, is Abraham. But Abraham did not, um, he wasn't the originator of the bloodline of the Messiah. He snatched himself out of the bloodline 
of the, his parents in, in all the Chaldeans. See, he, he was told by the father, let's, let's just try and look at this. This is getting quite interesting now. Hallelujah. Praise God. Look at uh, Genesis, okay? Um, chapter 12. It says, Now the Lord said to Abram, Get out. Get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house, and go to a land that I will show you. And I'll make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. So, you see, I will bless you. Now, when you hear that word, I will bless you, it has to do with the DNA and the genealogy of the seed of, and the nature of God. Just as we read in the book of Ephesians, where it says, that uh, we have been blessed with every spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Can you see that? So we are, uh, the blessing is in Christ. So you have to be in Christ to be able to receive the blessing. Hallelujah. It says, I will make you. So it's a making, it's a process. It says, I will make you a great nation. Or I will make you a spiritual nation, a nation from yonder, from above. So as he was saying that, he was talking to a, a race of people. But he was speaking to one man in whose bowels, in whose um, the loins, from that loins, God had to draw out a whole nation. So right at this stage, the whole nation was in his loins. So he said, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. And I will make your name or nature great. And you shall be a blessing also. I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse those that curse you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Can you see that? So, Galatians tells us that um, if you be Christ, so once you are plugged into Christ by Receiving the nature and the life of God, automatically, you become a seed of Abraham. Did you see? An heir. <laughs> oh my God. Praise God. This is awesome. Now, because we have been clouded by the, the wealth of the vain life of Babylon, we are not able to see through and see how great this thing is. Blessed be God. Hallelujah. So, we have to continue to burge on these resources, burge on this thing, so that the revelation that is already open, you see, it's interesting how you are the one who is pushing and pushing and when they ask you, you say, oh, I'm trying to break into this. Meanwhile, the, the, whatever it is that you're trying to break into, wants to break into you because you are the one who is closed up. And the revelation is open for you. The door is open. Yeshua says, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. No man can get to the Father except to come through me. Did you see that? No man can come to the Father. If you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed, an heir according to the promise. Did you hear? So, oh my God, hallelujah. 
once you are connected to Christ, you are connected to Abraham. And that automatically delivers the nature of God to you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, let's go and see um, uh, Proverbs, no, uh, Psalms. Now, look at Psalms now. Uh, Psalms says, blessed. See, the word blessed is here again, the blessed. Is the man who walks not according to the counsel of the ungodly, which means that you are not conforming to this world, nor stands in the path of sinners, or the way of sinners, praise God, neither do you sit in the seat of the scornful, but rather his delight is in the law of the Lord. You see, his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night, so that he can be planted like the tree, okay, that is by the river of water. Here he's saying that you should meditate day and night. In Romans he says you should be conformed to this. To, uh, you shouldn't be conformed to this world. Here in, uh, in uh, uh, Psalm 1 he says do not be conformed. Or do not accept or don't walk according to the counsel of the ungodly. In Romans he says do not be conformed to this world. It's the same thing. Don't walk according to the counsel. Do not be conformed. Can you see? Hallelujah. Blessed be God. So you see that if your delight is in the law of the Lord, Romans says you should renew your mind. It says you are going to be transformed when you begin to renew your mind. Here it says that if you delight in the law of the Lord and meditate on it day and night, it says you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of living waters that brings its fruit. Okay? In this season, and whose leaves also does not wither, and whatever he doeth or does prospers. Hallelujah. Praise God. So you, you, you see how this thing is. Is the is the um, the blessings available for you? Yes. Is it available to you? Yes. So what's the problem? You are the one who's not accessing it. And even when you access it, if you do not partake and engage in specific kind of conduct, the blessing cannot rest on you. It will not have the ability to infuse itself into you. You have to unblock yourself. You have to unblock yourself you have to l release the life that you are carrying inside of you you have to let it go you have to release your grip hallelujah of that life so that this other life can find access in praise god We started by talking about the, our identity in Christ, in the Messiah. You know, you could have dual citizenship. Uh, in my country, uh, we had an issue where uh, people were accusing the person who was vying for presidency that um, he has dual citizenship. He has is a citizen of another nation and they're saying that for you to be a citizen of another nation it means you will have sworn an oath of allegiance to that nation so there's a compromise here so if you are going to be president of nigeria then you shouldn't have any other uh, citizenship so that's the law, the constitution. So here you see that if you are not able to know who you are, if you are not able to know 
how you came about, your origins, your bloodline, who your father is, where you came from. There's a problem. Did you get that? You're a problem. There's a problem. Now, look at the book of John, the book of Yohanan. Remember, we're talking about our, our identity in Christ. You see, um, I remember when I was in college, uh, I come from Delta State in Nigeria, and uh, um, they gave us some kind of bursary or scholarship. And for you to be able to access that Commonwealth of Delta State or Bendel State, at that time it was Bendel State, for you to access the Commonwealth, you have to show proof that you are from that state of origin. So you have to go to your, go back to your state and get an approval from the state so to, as to prove that truly, truly you were born in, uh, and you are an indigent of Bendel State. And because of that identity that they would give to me, I would take it to my school, all right, and the, the uh, Bender State uh, uh, representative, and they will give me the money. They will pay me. Hallelujah. The only problem was that I was a small, uh, small boy. I was maybe about twenty something, and when they gave me the money, I went straight and bought the ticket to New York, Lagos, New York, Lagos, Panama. All right. Meanwhile, the well, my dad was paying my school fees anyway. Uh, my parents were, um, but as a young boy, what was uppermost was to go to America. So I went ahead and bought a ticket. Hallelujah. I ended up going to Lo the UK anyway, to London. Uh, but what gave me access to those funds was uh, the fact that I had an identity card. It was easy to identify me. And because I was conscious of the state I came from, and I heard and knew that there were resources that was available in the Commonwealth, I just went straight, presented my identity card. That's what God is saying. Our identity in Christ. Who are you? Who do you think you are? Where did you come from? Who's your dad? Very important. Now look at John chapter 1, Yohanan. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with the Father. All things were made through Him, and without Him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life. And this particular kind of life is the light of men. And this is the light that shines in darkness. And darkness does not have the capacity to comprehend, understand, unravel, overcome, overtake. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, look at, if you go ahead to verse 10. It says, he was in the world. The world was made through him or by him, but the world did not know him. He even made an attempt to come to his own, being Israel. Even his own, his own people did not, did not receive him. They denied him. They rejected him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Verse 12 now tells us this. This is awesome. It says, but despite the fact that the world refused him, despite the fact that his own people refused him, but as many as received him, to them gave he the power the right, the 
DNA, the authority, the audacity to become children of God. And these are those who believe in his name. So what grants you the access to becoming a child of God is to believe in his name. His name is Yeshua. And this is why I always call him Yeshua. I don't call him Jesus. I call him Yeshua because he is a savior. He will share his people. The meaning of Yeshua is savior, salvation. He will save. So as many as believed in that name, to them gave he the power to become children of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. These are those who were not born of blood. See, we have entered into genealogy now. We have entered into uh, DNA, genealogy, um, lineage, tribe, uh, bloodline. Since these are those who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but these are those who are born of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Did you see that? So if you believe in him, if you believe, if you can believe. As many as believed in his name. If you can believe to you. He would give the power. The authority. The audacity. The DNA to become. So. Since you are now in Christ. Why don't you access it's, you, you can't, it's like you telling me that, oh, I'm born. Okay, you're born in here, but who raised you? Did the Spirit of God raise you? Or is it the Spirit of this world that raised you? Who has been leading you? Is it this world or is it the Spirit of God? I believe that we've uh, done um, considerably. And I'm hoping that uh, we would continue in a little bit. But for now, never forget who you are. Never, ever forget that you and me, we are children of God. God bless you.